So people keep asking me, Josh, what are the best movies of 2017? What are the worst movies of 2017? So I'm making two lists here. One of the best, one of the worst. Now, the qualifiers for this are, I didn't see every movie, obviously. Like, The Snowman is not going to wind up on my worst list because I didn't go see that. And there's a lot of movies I'm going to leave off both lists because they were just okay. Something like Get Out. I didn't like it. I didn't hate it. It was an okay movie, so it doesn't wind up on either list. Now, both of these lists are going to be not be top tens. They are each going to just in- encompass what I liked or didn't like, and I'll go into a short explanation of why. The best of 2017 for me. Now, I have this reputation of being kind of a cinema snob, only liking indie fare, hating mainstream, big budget fare. And unfortunately, this this list is not going to dissuade anybody from that opinion. My best movies of this year were Sequence Break, which is an amazing David Cronenbergian kind of video drome meets video games, coin-op video games, by Graham Skipper. It's got a couple of cast members from John Dies at the end in it. All practical effects, beautiful lighting, a fantastic story. You actually care about the characters. At the time I'm recording this, I think it's only available on the Shutter Network, so I don't think it has a DVD release yet, but Sequence Break, you should absolutely check out. Another one would be, which again, another indie film that doesn't have a wide release yet, would be The Night Watchman. I was very put off by this one at first because, oh, it's a vampire film, oh, it's a siege film, and it's a comedy. Ugh. It's hilarious. It, it's it's funny because of the character interactions. They they both are almost sitcom like and feel natural in this environment. There there are some drawbacks to the Night Watchmen. The CGI is not very good, and there's a lot of CGI blood, a lot of CGI gore and bullets because apparently th- this was a very low budget, which that to me is a huge detriment. But the Night Watchmen was a fantastic movie. I really laughed my ass off at it. Next, you have another film that's not in wide release called It Stains the Sands Red. One of the most unique zombie films I've seen in a long, long time. It takes its time. I hated this movie for the first half hour. You just detest the main character. And then, and I think that was intentional because then something shifts in both the character and in the movie. So if when you do see this, don't turn it off because you're hating the first half hour because man, does it get better when it's supposed to. It, it has a very unique take on a zombie apocalypse. It's a much more personal take on a zombie apocalypse and it went in places i wasn't sure it was going to go and so it stains the sands red is a fantastic one another one the bad batch this is a not only really post-apocalyptic but societal breakdown this is keanu reeves plays a jim jones like guru in the in the wastelands jason mimosa is a cannibal and jim carrey has no dialogue in the movie but he's a homeless man who has way more information and bearing on the plot than most people would expect by the fact that it's Jim Carrey unrecognizable and having no dialogue. It's a brutal movie. It's kind of missold because The Bad Batch, one of the main problems with its marketing was it was sold as The Road Warrior meets Ms. 45. And while those aspects are in The Bad Batch, that's not what the movie's about. And there may be 10 to 15% of the movie. So if you go by the trailers, you're going to be still getting a great movie, just not the movie you thought you were going to. Then you've got the very obscure, this is, I, I think you could only see this one time, and it's the run and that was it was Woody Harrelson's Lost in London Live. It was a single take, two hour live movie about Woody Harrelson essentially reenacting the worst night of his entire professional life. It was broadcast live around the world to like 500 plus theaters. There's no DVD release announced for it. It's never aired anywhere else. So Lost in London Live, it was legitimately funny. Woody Harrelson deserves a ton of credit for shooting a live movie that he both stars in writes and directs and he kills it in this maybe you can only see lost in london live on bootleg but it was amazing then you've got the studio fair that i actually liked you have stuff like john wick chapter two i really enjoyed john wick chapter two my only thing is 
I liked John Wick better. I think the first movie is a better film. John Wick Chapter 2 has plot holes, bugged me. It has character motivations that bugged me. So it's not a perfect film, but John Wick Chapter 2 is bringing back the old 80s style, no shit, at throw everything at the wall because most of it sticks action movies. And then you also have things like Kong Skull Island. I hated Godzilla. I hated the Peter Jackson King Kong. But Kong Skull Island was just fantastic. It was fun. It was energetic. I loved the Vietnam setting. This is one of those ones where the Vietnam setting, you go, why wasn't this done earlier? This is, it makes so much sense. Great soundtrack. It's a mainstream PG-13 movie with a freaking cannibal holocaust homage in it. That takes some balls. Then you've got Atomic Blonde. Atomic Blonde wasn't perfect. I enjoyed it for the 80s aesthetic. I loved all the neon. Charlize Theron was great. The Most of the soundtrack was great, except for that horrendously bad cover of Stigmata by Marilyn Manson, which is one of the worst covers I've ever heard in my life. Hated it so much. But Atomic Blonde was fun. And then a couple of other honorable mentions where I liked them more than just the meh would be Tom Cruise's American Maid. It wasn't great, but I had a very good time at American Maid. It, part one. I'm not a big fan of it. I didn't really like the miniseries. I wasn't a big fan of the novel. But what sells it are the performances by the kids. They kill it in this movie. And they are alone worth watching this film for. For new movies, that's all I liked this year. So, sorry guys. Visit 1201beyond.com for more. <laughs>